Let's just go through uh, a sample of key issues and see if any of these strike a chord with you. Uh, firstly, local councils and their need to consult all the residents about what's going to happen. The importance of creating the right environments, one that's respectful to them and one that means something in their lives. And importantly, that decision-making has to be supported in a genuinely shared manner. Uh, finally, on this slide, focus on the benefits for everyone in the community, and we just heard that with one of the questions. It's not just old people, but the benefits can flow on to many others as well. An active ageing approach, and we heard this morning about the term active ageing, energising people and making unique things happen where authentic partnerships occur. So you're getting this theme running through today, which I think is really important. Attitudes are really hard to change, but they can be reformed with the right knowledge, the right education. So that's one thing that we need to think about where there's prejudice, doing things to change attitudes. Uh, existing plans and strategies will have many things that overlap and perhaps count, provide some aspects for older people, but not necessarily all of, all, all of them. And so there's a need for a coordinated approach looking at what's existing to come up with a better way forward. On the community programs, uh, well-planned community infrastructure increases social cohesion and decreases social isolation. And I think that's so true that if it's done properly, you can get these benefits flowing through. Uh, intergenerational and culturally sensitive programs, another word that was brought out this morning, culturally sensitive programs can give a positive experience for young and old. And last night, those at the reception would have seen the year 11 and 12 students from Hawker College serving the food at the IRT uh, home there. And so you got that interaction there. We also saw their gardens that they'd been doing, the woodwork that the students had been doing. So that interaction was very important. Uh, we, a good presentation we heard uh, also this afternoon about neighbours supporting each other and encouraging social participation, cohesion and information sharing and a very good program uh, coming out of, uh, where was it, Victoria, I think, on neighbours uh, supporting each other. Uh, well, I think we all know this one, volunteering helps older people to keep active learning new skills and knowledge. And there were a number of presentations that brought out the truth of that message. Uh, local Government and Traders Association. Now, if people work together with the seniors, you can get improved access, inclusion. We can hear about programs where the businesses, where the malls actually work with groups to improve access and make it much more a valuable experience for seniors going there, and it's good for business. On infrastructure, uh, an age-friendly community adapts its structures and services to the needs of older people. And that's the position we're at now with the increasing population of age and the communities needing to adapt and modify their approach to cater for this. Technology can be used. And certainly, uh, older residents can have a, a great influence uh, using apps on iPads, tablets, smartphones, and actually giving feedback uh, in, in a very structured way, uh, which can then be analysed and modify approaches of councils in particular. Uh, pedestrian mobility friendly access within cities. So once again, it's, uh, that's something that's needed, but it can have much wider benefits. So there's scope to actually capitalise on various pressure groups, not just the age, but other pressure groups to achieve an end that suits uh, the aged, aged people. Uh, community events and activities are great things and the more seniors can get involved, the better. And if you can uh, organise community transport, uh, so much will the uh, event give advantage to those older people who want to attend them. Uh, innovative seniors housing, we've heard programs on that easier to live in and maintain, and certainly, if they're good enough, they will encourage homeowners to downsize and then make properties available for the younger families that need more room. And 
Various housing models, as you can see there, offer affordability, independence, support, companionship and security. Now, they were just a number of key issues that the staff have been working on trying to pull together. There were many more. Uh, so to finish off this program, I just hope that some of those struck a chord with you uh, in the context of our next steps in this journey to a more, more age-friendly Australia. Tomorrow morning, there's uh, some conference delegates will be meeting to discuss the creation of an Australian network of age-friendly cities and communities, and that would be a fantastic outcome of this conference. That's from 8.30 to 10 o'clock at the ACT Legislative Assembly in London Circuit. That might mean anything to you. Get on your iPad and look up Google Maps. Um, and we certainly hope this network will serve as an ongoing forum in which areas and uh, ideas and incentives can be shared. Now, as you're all aware who've been involved in conferences, they just don't happen. The ACT Office for Ageing has been a driving force uh, with Anna John, who was, there she is over there, stand up Anna, Anna John. Um, the conference coordinator, Jerry McKeon, there, Jerry. Uh, his, uh, his assistant, Lindsay Burge and Rebecca Collette, there, okay. And so many government, community and businesses. I thank particularly the chairs and the timekeepers for all the sessions today, over those, you know, 20 to 30 sessions. And there's a hidden group that you may not be aware of, and that's the steering committee. They've actually been meeting, uh, developing this conference over the last six months under co-chairs of Meredith Witten and Nick Manicus of the Community Services Directorate, who were here earlier today. Uh, together with Kevin Vassarotti, who we saw up here uh, from COTA ACT doing some chairing, and 11 other committee members. So that was wonderful that they've been doing this work. Uh, to our sponsors, who kept the cost of registration absurdly low, I think we're very appreciative of IRT Group, the Centre of Excellence on Population Ageing Research, and the Centre for Research on Ageing, Health and Wellbeing. Uh, but thank you to all those, uh, and thank you to you for making this day a day really full of rich ideas. Uh, I wish you all a safe journey home, and hope you've been inspired to pursue the further development of age-friendly cities and communities. Good afternoon. Thank you.